Okay, so I'm really pleased to be here and in particular to commend the work of Aberdeenshire around its approach to towns and also the work in particular the work that Audrey has led around embedding the town centre first principle. If you think about it, two or three years ago nobody was even talking about towns. We had a narrative that was principally led by city and city growth and I think over this last two to three years we've seen a step change in how we view our towns as being critical, not just to the economic success of Scotland, but to the uh, to the social success of Scotland. Because <coughs> fundamentally, as, as, as Ross alluded to, we are a nation of towns. And if you take a look at the, the geographic nature of Scotland, uh, we've got a, a very wide spread of population. Uh, we don't have that agglomeration effect that mega cities globally can have. We never will have. We've got two small European scale cities in Edinburgh and Glasgow. And by and large, the rest of it hooks around what we do with our towns. So it's probably more important what we do in <coughs> places like Greenock and Paisley and Hamilton than it is in terms of what we put into Glasgow and Edinburgh, which are fairly resilient. It's a combination of both, but at least uh, we're now talking about towns. Uh, I also feel there's a wee bit of a common bond between Aberdeenshire and Scotland's Towns Partnership. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are the national agency. We were set up a couple of years back to try and uh, inspire improvement around town centres. And to be that, the, the best analogy I see us as being the spike at the top of an umbrella, because town centres are very complex things and they involve a lot of different stakeholders and different activities. And the umbrella itself is a very, very wide range of people who we've now got to, to collaborate. But by and large, these guys were coming forward with your revised regeneration strategies, your four towns reports, etc. Roughly at the same time, we were setting up the agency. So there was a really positive relationship with Stephen Archer and the team up here, and a lot of shared learning as we actually uh, progressed the supports for other towns across the country. Uh, in fact, it, the USP platform, one of the biggest uh, supports that we've developed, and it's a world's first, we have managed to create a typology of every single town in Scotland with a thousand people or more. Sitting behind that typology is somewhere in the region of about 105,000 bits of data, and that was to allow you guys to make an evidence-based approach. None of the anecdote, none of the emotion. This was about making real decisions based on hard data. So Scotland has led the world in that context. We have 479 towns, which is certainly more than the six, seven cities that we're talking about. And a lot of those towns are bigger than the smaller cities, and they actually perform the role of capital cities when you think of uh, places like Dumfries in the, in the southwest of Scotland. So uh, the next step then was coming back up here to talk uh, with Stephen, Belinda, Audrey, and uh, your, your management structure to look at how do we take this forward, how do we actually start to embed this concept at a council level. So friends and partners of the struggle, I would say, and uh, a recognition that probably Aberdeenshire does continue to be ahead of the game. And I, I go back to Ross's point that this stuff isn't readily visible. But what you've got is a very st strong policy platform. You've built the foundations. You've already got a lot of asset base within uh, Aberdeenshire to, to, to work with. You've got your approach right, so I think you have to be commended for that. And in addition, to keep the, the whole political imperative on towns, we've also got the local MSP, Julian Martin, who sits on our cross-party group in towns in the Parliament. So again, uh, it keeps everything focused. A very, very quick reminder of the context. 2008 financial crisis, everything changed. We had the biggest car crash in, in history, and we haven't really recovered from that at all. If you think of really what that done was only compound what we as a society have already been doing, which is hollowing out our town centres. Through human behaviour, the restructure of our economies, the shift in industries, etc., we have sort of taken our eye off the town centre and we've forgot about the need to nurture. We all like to live on the edge of town in a little box. We would travel away somewhere else to work, come home at night, pull the curtains, go to sleep, wake up the next morning and do the same thing again. A lot of then uh, edge of town investment, you know, through planning and, and lack of nurture, we allowed a lot of retail shift and then obviously a lot of residential shift uh, followed the same pattern. And very quickly with hollow better town centres, when the recession bit, basically you see the restructure of retail. So we wanted to shop the edge of town and go to a destination or use online platforms. And the retail sector struggled very quickly. That led to a lot of disinvestment, 
on a lot of uh, power. On top of that, you had the shrinkage within the public sector, very challenging economic circumstances. So within the town centre itself, we were seeing even further disinvestment across police, fire, council, museums and galleries and other statutory bodies. It was really a, a, a period of intense uh, sort of chaotic behaviour. Uh, we also had, with lack of money, a dysfunction within both the, the commercial and residential property markets. So there was a flight to prime. It was okay if you were in Newton Burns or something like that, or to a certain extent some of the towns within Aberdeenshire. But if you were in one of those post-industrial central belt towns, there wasn't a lot of commercial interest in terms of housing and commercial development. So a lot of things came into play in a very uh, short space of time. And I think we became overnight almost like a developer-led economy, where we were following the money and we weren't thinking about the long-term social and economic function of our town centres in terms of being uh, the beating heart of our communities, the place where people do come to transact, to come to socialise, to come to bump into each other. And now we've got the position where we, we recognise that. So there will be further pressure to come. Uh, you know, this isn't about... Uh, we know where we are and everything is going to get better. I think there will be further changes in retail. We'll see more retail disinvestment within the town centre. Uh, you can see that with the banking sector in particular, where there, we as human uh, humans actually dictate that we all just moan about the bank shutting down, but when's the last time you walked into a bank branch? Most of it has moved to an online platform, so you can't fight against the reality of what's coming. But what we've got in Scotland, which sets us aside from most of the other countries, is that we have taken a much more wide approach to the town centre, that it's all about putting public services in. Retail is not the, the answer. It's going to be a, a big part of the solution moving forward, but we're looking at a much wider set of uh, solutions to take us forward. So that was really uh, the context. We had a problem. The Scottish Government recognised the problem. They reviewed it independently. They set up policy, and that's literally where the Times Partnership came in to be that go-to function and to try and get that policy embedded. I look at the policy, the single biggest tool that I have in my toolkit is the Town Centre First Principle. The 32 local authorities have signed up to it. We've got people like the Scottish Futures Trust, the Funding Council, Scott Real, Calumet, and um, third sector organisations who've come together to say, yep, we'll sign up to this principle as well. So there's been really good progress. And hanging beneath that, we've got the six themes of the Town Centre Action Plan. And now we are at the stage where we're trying to operationalise this. So town centre living, how do we repopulate the town centre? We've got a lot of people in Scotland just now who are being denied a housing option, young people in particular. We have uh, elderly people that we don't look after very well. And I think the town centre lends itself to closer interrogation to provide a, a template for some of those housing solutions long term. Uh, digital, again, we're in the process of trying to roll out a lot of digital pilots across the country. We're taking in for Clyde as a pilot because within and for Clyde you've got six or seven very, very different towns. And the ability then is when we try and prove the concept, we can scale that up much more widely uh, across the piece. Getting communities more involved and trying to inspire uh, community ownership and a bit more to, uh, civic pride within the town centre. So we've now got the empowerment legislation uh, through to assist with that, and we're looking at assisting <coughs> communities through building in capacity, asset transfer, and it, it's what the chief executive said, it's, it's a whole council approach, it's a one council approach, and it's building it from the bottom up, it's actually getting the communities uh, engaged again. In 2016, we hosted the world's first town summit. You hear a lot about cities of the future, and smart cities, and whatever. We decided that we would just roll that back and talk about towns. So we held a, a three-day international summit in Edinburgh, Arbin and McGurth, and we brought the world to Scotland to talk about towns. And from that, we developed the World Towns Framework. Dermot and a delegation from Scotland have just come back from Malmo. We leased the brand to, to, to Sweden this year. And that will come back to, uh, to Edinburgh 2018 in terms of uh, finalising and signing off that framework. So there's a global recognition that Scotland is actually leading on this agenda. And the chief officer of the world's largest uh, towns organisation, the International Downtown Association, of uh, 4,000 global members, has just written to the First Minister recommending Scotland on its approach. And very much 
I think these guys can be commended on the same level because this has been a, a, a shared journey. So as we move forward uh, as terms of, in terms of the town's partnership, uh, next year we will continue to operationalize. And for you guys, I see the future as collaboration. It has to be collaboration. This has been about bringing the public and the private and the third sectors together. Two years ago, if I went into a room and said, who's got an issue with the town centre? Every hand went up. And then when I said, right, who's going to fix it? Every hand went down. Nobody was taking ownership or leadership. And I think that's what sets these guys aside from uh, some of the, the other authorities. So collaboration and partnership moving forward. If you think of what we have done, excuse me, we have brought in pension funds at one end, through to large investors, through to mainstream housing, through to social housing. The transportation piece about connectivity, we've now got the likes of Scott Rail and Calumet, uh, first in stagecoach, all working very closely in terms of uh, how we drive improvement. The retail sector, we're working very closely with the smaller scale, the uh, Scottish Grocers Federation, right up to the big guys in the retail, uh, uh, Scottish Retail Consortium. So, it's about partnership, it's bringing in all of those key stakeholders. It's looking at the diversity of your client, it's looking at the form, the function. You've now got a lot of support tools through uh, our agency. You've got the time toolkit, how to make your times more active, attractive, accessible. You've got an evidence platform in terms of data through understanding Scottish places. You've got a host of case studies. And I think this is just about partnership moving forward. Uh, to me, the big things for Aberdeenshire, you know, you've got a downturn and a sort of fragility around the economy with the oil and gas. But the city growth deal, the city region growth deal, I think fundamentally needs to be very carefully handled in terms of how you look at how the hinterland towns actually feed in and out of all of that. So opportunity, but be careful. Alongside your traditional base, I think the recovery will be around low carbon renewables. It'll be about digital, about education, about housing and tourism. And all of that together, with a strong vision can actually help make your times together. So closing, I think Aberdeen has listened, it's learned. Uh, you've developed a very solid foundation to build upon. If you pull all this together and collaborate and, and take ownership and leadership, I think you can get a very vibrant and connected city and region which uh, continues to outperform most of the UK and certainly most of Scotland. So uh, we look forward to continuing partnership with you all.